They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but what if it takes forever to load? In this episode, you'll learn the secrets to optimizing images and graphics for your Squarespace website. You'll discover how to create a perfect balance between stunning visuals and lightning fast performance based on image type and image quality. Welcome to Think Inside the Square, a podcast full of quick tips and tricks to help you create a Squarespace website that you're proud of. I'm your host, Becca Harpain, Squarespace expert and creator of InsideTheSquare.co. In this episode, I'll be sharing my best tips for creating quality images for your Squarespace website so your content looks good and loads quickly. For a transcript of this episode, along with the links to any resources mentioned, visit InsideTheSquare.co forward slash podcast. The term Squarespace is a trademark of Squarespace Incorporated. This content is not affiliated with Squarespace Incorporated. First things first, let's talk about why images are so crucial for your Squarespace website. Think of your website like a digital storefront. The images you choose are like the display window that catch people's attention. They represent your brand and your business, and they'll set the tone for your entire website interaction. So picking the right pictures is key to making a stellar first impression. These days, visuals aren't just photos. We're talking about images, videos, icons, and even AI-generated content. All of these types of visual content have different sources, different rules and regulations, and different file formats. One of the most important things that I'll probably mention a few times in this episode is the term open source. Open source content generally comes with a special kind of license known as a Creative Commons license, which allows any open source content to be used and distributed freely without the need for attribution or without the need to seek permission from the artist or creator. There's no need to credit them or ask for permission, which is super convenient for things like background images that you want to use on your site. But you can give credit to the original creator, and I think you should, but you don't legally have to. Just make sure the content you're using is really open source. There are a lot of open source image and video databases out there, Pixabay and Unsplash are two of the most popular, and Squarespace links directly to Unsplash. Unsplash is one of my most favorite databases of high-quality open-source images because they have a really robust search feature. And again, it connects with Squarespace, so it's easy to search for a background image for a page section without even having to leave the editor. So if you don't have a lot of photos for your website, try using some open-source ones, or you could use an image generator. Adobe Firefly and Doll E have both created some interesting images, but please be careful about using content created by AI and make sure that you aren't violating any laws or regulations in your area, including copyright laws. To avoid that, I personally stick to open source images on Unsplash, or images that I take myself, or images that I pay a professional photographer to take for me. When it comes to open source content, I also use open source icons from Google. They have a huge collection, free for anyone to use, and you can change the style of these icons very easily, making them thick or thin, rounded or flat, or even two-dimensional colors. It is such a cool collection, and they're all open source, free to use for anything. You can check out the collection at fonts.google.com forward slash icons. Again, open source, so use them for anything and everything. Okay, content of the images aside, Let's talk about the file itself. (laughs) I am about to get super nerdy here, my friends, so buckle up. We're going for a ride. The type of visuals I want to cover in this episode are JPG, PNG, GIF, and MP4. And I'm not going to cover SVGs because Squarespace doesn't support those for image blocks. So if you don't know what SVG means, don't worry about it. We're not covering that in this episode. We'll be talking about JPGs, JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, and MP4s. MP4 files are videos, and with motion being such a popular thing to add to a website these days, we've got to find a way to upload videos that are high quality, but not gigantic files. Videos for the background of a page or a page section are tricky. First up, they won't play with sound, so remove the audio track from your file to save some space. Squarespace won't show a video at a resolution higher than 1080p, so when you need to record or save your video file, HD is as large as it needs to be. Now, if you want to share a video as part of your page content, I recommend hosting your video somewhere else and sharing the link to it with a video block. 
all of the public videos on my website are embedded YouTube videos, and all of my paid course videos are private Vimeo videos. Here's why this works so well for making my Squarespace website load fast. The only thing that loads on the page is the link to the video, not the whole thing. When someone clicks on the video to play it, it's up to the other program to serve up that content. When you upload the entire video to Squarespace, it's up to Squarespace to load that content, and it can take a hot minute because it's processing everything else on the page at the same time. Now, this might change later on, but as of right now, I keep my content on YouTube and Vimeo, and I share the link on Squarespace so my page loads quickly. Again, the public stuff is on my YouTube channel, and my courses and paid content, those are private videos on Vimeo. Now, the other type of motion visual that I'm absolutely loving these days is the clever use of a GIF. A GIF, or G-I-F, is short for Graphics Interchange Format. They can be simple images, or they can be animated to add some motion and life to your content. What's really cool about these GIF files is that they use a type of compression that reduces file size without losing too much in image quality. They are perfect for adding a little bit of personality to your website with animations or looping images. And the best part, anywhere you can add an image in Squarespace, you can use a GIF. Yeah, even blog thumbnails and product images. A GIF is a much smaller file than a full video, and I love seeing creative GIFs on product pages. Now, a large GIF file can slow down your site, so I do not recommend using them for page backgrounds or page section backgrounds. Squarespace has designed those for videos, and it has its own compression in the back end of the program that works great. But smaller GIFs for image blocks, it's a great way to add some extra movement to your site. The next two type of images that I wanted to talk about are JPG and PNG. These are the two most common, but when it comes to size and page speed, they can be light years apart. A JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. A fact I did not know until I did some research for this episode, so that's kind of interesting. This format is perfect for large image files because it actually compresses the image to make it smaller in size, which is super handy for saving space and speeding up your website loading. Even with this compression, JPEGs can still keep your pictures looking pretty good, so you'll get a smaller file without a huge drop in quality as long as they maintain 72 ppi, or pixels per inch. Yep, 72. Sounds small, right? A lot of screens can handle larger ratio of pixels per inch, but rest assured, 72 is still the standard for web. Print is close to 300 or above, so it's kind of wild that our resolution doesn't need to be too large for any web-based content. This definitely helps cut down on file size. The other common image type is a PNG. PNG stands for Portable Networks Graphic. It's super common for images, especially when you need clear, high-quality images with multiple layers. These files can be much larger than JPEGs because they contain these layers and even have levels of transparency. I use PNG images for all of my icons and logos to keep the quality of the image preserved and minimize the chance of pixelation. So my rule of thumb here, if it's going to take up more than half the screen, I'll use a JPEG file. If it's an icon or a logo, I'll use a PNG. Both of them only need to be 72 pixels per inch. For my icons, I usually make a PNG about twice the size I'll need it to be just to make sure it stays crisp on all devices. A tiny icon on my desktop might stretch to half the screen on a mobile device, so it's always good to have a slightly bigger icon than you need. For full page width backgrounds, I use a JPEG image, and the file that I create is usually 3,000 pixels wide. Wider than that is unnecessary, and honestly, 3,000 pixels, it's pretty generous. But I work with a lot of designers who have large monitors, and I want them to have a good experience looking at my site. For most people, maximum of 2,000 is plenty, but I definitely like to design 3,000 just to go that extra mile. Now, the visual size of the file is important, but so is the physical size. Yeah. Yeah. At the time of recording this, the image file size limit in Squarespace is 20 megabytes. But Squarespace recommends using image files that are less than 500 kilobytes. The smaller the image is, the faster a computer browser can load it. 
So what if you have the perfect PNG or perfect JPEG, but the file size is still too big? Remember, 3000 pixels is as wide as any image would need to be, but you can also compress the file using a free program. I love tinypng.com, not affiliated, just a fan. It's a program that can compress JPEGs and PNGs, and it does a really good job. Sometimes you can lose quality, but again, a website background does not need to be larger than 3000 pixels wide, and it should be a JPEG, not a PNG, so it shouldn't be that big of a file to begin with. PNG, save those for smaller visuals, like icons, logos, and anything that has a little transparency to it. If you don't need transparency, make it a JPEG. JPEGs are great for page backgrounds and page section backgrounds, and they'll be a smaller file than a PNG. If either file is too big for your liking, run it through a compression program like tinypng.com that I recommended. I'll have a link to that in the show notes at insidethesquare.co forward slash podcast. When it comes to resolution for either image type, they don't need to be larger than 72 pixels per inch. Now, if you need some images for your site, look at images that are open source, covered by the Creative Commons license, so they're free free to use on your website. You can find a ton of them on unsplash.com, and you can reach their searchable database right in Squarespace. When you see the option to browse stock images, Right there, you'll find the free images section. Those are unsplash.com images, and they're super searchable. For icons, check out the open source icons available from Google at fonts.google.com forward slash icons. Again, I recommend using a PNG file format for those icons so they can have a transparent background and keep a high quality. When you want to add motion, a GIF is a great idea. GIFs can be used anywhere in images used in Squarespace, and they're smaller than video files. They don't have audio, and they loop. For video files that you want in your content, you can upload them to Squarespace or use a video block. I prefer to host my videos on YouTube or Vimeo and link them using the video block or embedding block, so I don't have to have those videos load with all of my other content. I use YouTube for my public-facing videos, and I use Vimeo for my paid course videos. If you want to use a video for a page section background in Squarespace, do everything you can to make the file smaller. Remove the audio from the file, it won't play in the background anyway, and there's no need to have it be anything fancier than HD. Squarespace will reduce it and compress it to 1080p, so keep your file small and save it that way to begin with. And I almost forgot one final tip for anyone using a background video. In Squarespace, when you add a video for a page section background, you'll see an option for a mobile fallback image. If your video file is just too big for smaller screen sizes or there are any issues loading it, Squarespace wants you to upload an image that it will use instead. You see where this is going? That image can be a GIF. Make a smaller, compressed, looping GIF of that same background video and upload that as your mobile fallback. This GIF doesn't need to be bigger than 800 pixels wide, so you should be able to make one small enough that it fits in the file size limit. So there you have it, folks. Optimizing your visuals for Squarespace isn't just about making them look good. It's about making sure you're using the right image type so that they load quickly and it enhances your site's overall performance. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Think Inside the Square. I hope you loved it. I have a lot more tips and tricks to share with you about making an amazing Squarespace website that's uniquely yours. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you happen to be listening to this episode. Thanks again for listening. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.